Section 11, Children, the Junior Partners. Chapter 48, Heaven's Estimate of Children. Christ placed such a high estimate upon your children that he gave his life for them. Treat them as the purchase of his blood. Patiently and firmly train them for him. Discipline with love and forbearance. As you do this, they will become a crown of rejoicing to you and will shine as lights in the world. The youngest child that loves and fears God is greater in his sight than the most talented and learned man who neglects the great salvation. The youth who consecrate their hearts and lives to God have, in so doing, placed themselves in connection with the fountain of all wisdom and excellence. The soul of the little child that believes in Christ is as precious in his sight as are the angels about his throne. They are to be brought to Christ and trained for Christ. They are to be guided in the path of obedience, not indulged in appetite and vanity. If we would but learn the wonderful lessons which Jesus sought to teach his disciples from a little child, how many things that now seem insurmountable difficulties would wholly disappear. When the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily, I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Children derive life and being from their parents, and yet... It is through the creative power of God that your children have life, for God is the life giver. Let it be remembered that children are not to be treated as though they were our own personal property. Children are the heritage of the Lord, and the plan of redemption includes their salvation as well as ours. They have been entrusted to parents in order that they might be brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord that they might be qualified to do their work in time and eternity. Mothers, deal gently with your little ones. Christ was once a little child. For his sake, honor the children. Look upon them as a sacred charge not to be indulged, petted, and idolized, but to be taught to live pure, noble lives. They are God's property. He loves them and calls upon you to cooperate with him in helping them to form perfect characters. If you would meet God in peace, feed his flock now with spiritual food, for every child has the possibility of attaining unto eternal life. Children and youth are God's peculiar treasure. The youth need to be impressed with the truth that their endowments are not their own. Strength, time, intellect are but lent treasures. They belong to God, and it should be the resolve of every youth to put them to the highest use. He is a branch from which God expects fruit, a steward whose capital must yield increase, a light to illuminate the world's darkness. Every youth, every child has a work to do for the honor of God and the uplifting of humanity. I saw that Jesus knows our infirmities and has himself shared our experience in all things but in sin. 
Therefore, he has prepared for us a path suited to our strength and capacity. And like Jacob, has marched softly and in evenness with the children as they were able to endure, that he might entertain us by the comfort of his company and be to us a perpetual guide. He does not despise, neglect, or leave behind the children of the flock. He has not bidden us move forward and leave them. He has not traveled so hastily as to leave us with our children behind. Oh, no. But he has evened the path to life, even for children. And parents are required in his name to lead them along the narrow way. God has appointed us a path suited to the strength and capacity of children.